Okay everybody, welcome back and what we're going to do now is, is go through the consolidation, the same uh, end of chapter problem for chapter 3, but I'm going to do it presenting the initial value method and this is a, a method that was also presented in your text and, and it actually is what you're going to find in practice uh, uh, frequently uh, compared to when, when a, um, a parent company follows the um, the equity method completely on a on a consolidated subsidiary, and I think you're going to say to yourself after you see this um, this illustration of the initial value, it's it's, it's going to make sense to you as to why this is the uh, the common practice. Now, a couple things to set this up. Remember, in the uh, in the equity method, um, I had to do this plug number down here, the 494,000. Well, that's still the case um, because the authors in this in this end of chapter problem did not give you all of the trial balance. So, uh, so anyhow, that's the same. But the other thing I had to do differently is the beginning of year retained earnings balance. I calculated that number. Um, and so that number is not what you're going to see in your textbook. Now the textbook also does not present this worksheet solution. All they do is, is go through the, um, the um, uh, journal entries that you're supposed to use. So I'm wanting to get you accustomed and used to doing a worksheet because that's what we're going to do in chapters 4 and 5 and it certainly is the way you're going to, to see it in practice. So I had to come up with this number, this 1,208,000 and you'll see that everything's going to work out just fine. We're starting out with a um, with a balance sheet that balances, okay, 3,322,000 here and 1,260,000 on bottom, the subsidiary. So we're good to go. I blanked everything out. I put my cross references in here, and I'm going to step you through the journal entries uh, as part of this lecture. So, the first entry we're going to make uh, is is what we always do, which is the entry S, which is the shareholders' equity. So we're trying to remember eliminate the investment account. It's going to come down to zero ultimately, and so the first thing we need to do is is wipe out that beginning equity uh, that we had, which was the the, the um, 400,000. Uh, and 320,000, which were the common stock and retained earnings, respectively, on bottom. Now, the other thing that we've got to do, uh, we're crediting the investment, and we, we have to hit our debits to our equity, so there's our $400,000 on common stock. Oops, too much. And then we'll have... Um, are 320,000 on uh, on the uh, retain earnings, and again, this is retain earnings that was uh, in existence at the time we bought the company. And you can see the retain earnings balance now is 490,000, but obviously bottom has had uh, two years now of of net income on its own. So the 320 was uh, back in the historical work papers. So my entry balances at this point. Um, Excuse me, I got a little ahead and forgot to take out that dividends there. But you can see my debits uh, equal my credits at this point. So that's our first and first entry is to get rid of, of the uh, stockholders' equity. Now, the entry A, remember, A stood for allocations, and I'm using the same nomenclature that uh, your textbook follows. And so that was $122,000. And what those were are the, um, the mark to market the, when, we, when we bought the company. When we bought Bottom Company, we had uh, the license agreement. Remember, it was forty thousand dollars. And I'm going to put in here what um, the original estimate. Uh, the, these are the incremental amounts that we have to adjust to. Okay, ten thousand on equipment, and buildings was seventy-two thousand. Now I did some shading here so you can see, I, I'm trying to just draw your attention to some of the entries I'll make. So the net number was the 122 that we had, um, here it is right here, excuse me, on the investment. So again, we're still, our debits are equaling our credits. And just so you know, as an aside here, you guys are 400 level accounting uh, students. When you get out uh, in practice and start using accounting systems, I've yet to see a system in my auditing career or when I was a controller, there's there's no accounting system that will allow you to um, to have an entry uh, where your debits don't equal credits. Now, to remind you yet again, uh, we're not making these entries to the general ledger, but we're we're doing it on our worksheet. But one of the things we want to keep track of is you know certainly do the debits equal the credits. So at this point, we're good to go, um, and we've we've completed our entries S and A. Now uh, the entry uh, for I for income 
we're really not going to to do that okay this is this is the beauty of, of using um, the the initial value method that we're that we're demonstrating here so let's now take care of the dividends for the current year um, this dividend income that you can see on top um, this is where they've the dividend was paid by the subsidiary so we're going to take care of that uh, that's not something we would show to the outside investment community because it's an intercompany dividend and then we need to uh, take that out of the dividends paid on bottoms books as a credit so we're good on, on dividend now this is where um, there's I won't I don't want to say there's any complication to this but it's where you're going to have a record on the side um, remember where we showed the how the investment company would actually roll forward um, to that million oh ninety five this is the this is the original price we paid for it was eight hundred and forty two thousand and then you have all this ensuing activity okay there's that ten thousand dollar dividend we just accounted for but if we were accounting for it under the equity method we'd have to be making entries for all of this stuff each year well, thank goodness we're not doing that. We're just we had it on our books at 842,000. We left it on our books at 842,000. But what we now need to do though in terms of these like the excess amortization that goes on. So let's get back to this um, to the initial value method and see how we're going to handle that. So that's why I've got this uh, for the E portion. Of, remember the S A I D E, where some of the uh, or was the mnemonic that the authors used to make sure you've made all the necessary consolidation entries. So let's look at the uh, for the prior periods for 2011 and 2012. What is it I need to do? Well, if you go back to your notes, uh, that you notice that on the license agreement we were taking two thousand dollars a year of amortization so I've got two years to deal with the prior that I'm talking about here for 2011 and 2012 so I'm gonna have to make an entry for four thousand uh, dollars getting the right sell here four thousand dollars of uh, I'm taking this as, as an amortization so it's reducing my net book value of the license agreement and so that's what I'm doing there now the prior periods for the equipment again this is two years worth of amortization it was a thousand dollars a year so that's going to be a two thousand dollar credit and on the the uh, building equip building account it's going to be two years of six thousand dollars each so that's twelve thousand dollars okay the, again I'm taking this as like accumulated depreciation I know that shows in the land column but we're going to going to account for it um, uh, in the buildings okay it's, I know it's on the wrong line here but those three numbers the four the two and the twelve if I add all those together I get eighteen thousand dollars and what I need to do then is take that against the beginning of the year retained earnings now that should be intuitively obvious as to why I'm going to beginning of year retained earnings because I'm talking 2011 and 2012 and this worksheet as you know is for 20 for the year ended December 31st 2013 so these deal with the prior two years that had I been under the equity method you know I would have been closing this out to retained earnings so what I'm doing is debiting retained earnings for that expense that I otherwise would have recognized on these uh, remember these were the mark to market to say at the time we bought the company and remember we bought them back in 2011 we needed to to say okay there's a license agreement that has value to us so let's place a value on that the equipment was undervalued by ten thousand dollars so let's place a value on that and buildings were undervalued by seventy two thousand so when I do that then for consolidated purposes I have to recognize the amortization on those items or the depreciation for the, the tangible assets here I have to recognize that going forward so anytime I do present these financial statements to the investment community uh, I have to I have to put these entries on my uh, on my worksheet so that's what I'm doing now for the current year okay we'll just drop those numbers in it was two thousand dollars a year on the license agreement it was two thousand dollars a year or excuse me one thousand dollars a year on equipment and six thousand dollars a year on buildings now when I add the current six thousand plus one thousand plus two thousand I'm at nine thousand dollars so that nine thousand dollar total of my current 
excess amortization that, that I need to record, I'm going to bifurcate that between amortization and depreciation. And I have $2,000 of amortization. And that's going to be the license agreement. And then it would be $7,000, which is the sum of the $6,000 and the $1,000 for my tangible assets. And that will give me the $7,000 there. So these two add to the $9,000. Now, at this point, I am done. Because now let me let me prove that to you. Well, besides the fact that my debits equal my credits on my on my elimination and adjusting entries, I also see that my total assets equals total liabilities plus equity. And there's that plug amount that I had to put in there. Okay, so uh, that's also from the other uh, method, the full equity method. But also, I want you to notice that the that the total assets that I'm presenting are identical under the initial value as they were to the full completed, let me get to the right tab here, the 3,835 total assets, that's the same number under the full equity as it is on the initial value, the 3,835. So, so I, you know, that's how, that's the simplicity of using the initial value method. Again, it's what you're going to typically see in practice and what I'm going to hold you to on the test, I hear the moans and groans right now, but I'm going to ask you to do a full equity, okay, on the, on the, um, both as a homework problem and on your test, because the reason I'm asking that is it demonstrates to me then that you can do a roll forward on the full equity and handle all the necessary consolidating entries, even though the initial value, while you're still having to do that roll forward, uh, it just simplifies, in my opinion, it simplifies the actual consolidation worksheet. Again, thank you for your attention, and we're going to move on uh, in Chapter 4 next week, and we will tackle uh, what's considered what used to be called a minority interest and now they've changed the to get I guess more politically correct I don't know why but but uh, when we went to acquisition method from the old purchase accounting now they call it a um, a uh, non-controlling interest but so right now we own a hundred percent of the stock and that's really the difference between chapters three and chapter four is where this was kind of simplistic in that we we bought the thing uh, right at the end of the year or the first of the new year and we bought 100 percent of the stock but now what do you do when you buy it maybe midterm mid-year and what, what you also do when you have a less than 100 percent ownership in the consolidation okay thanks very much and we'll talk to you soon